let's put some theorems on here, and I'm going to begin to answer your question. I'm going to begin to explain to you where those numbers came from. One of them is really easy. And so this theorem is due to a guy named Leon Mirsky. Now, Mirsky was a, a quite distinguished mathematician, quite, quite good. And he published it in 1971. And the theorem is a post set of height h can be partitioned into h antichains. And here's the proof. The proof is one line recursively strip off the minimal elements. Now, look at the picture again. And that, this is the same picture that I had on the other slide. The scaling is a little smaller, but it's exactly the same picture. And I hope it's clear to you. Look at all the elements which have color 1. What are they? They are the minimal elements. Remove the minimal elements and look at the minimal elements of what's left. They, they have color 2. Remove those. The elements which have color 3 are the minimal elements of what's left, etc. That's how that coloring is done. All right, now if we put in a few more details, here's, here's two paragraphs and also an algorithm. For each I, let AI be the set of elements for which the longest chain with x at its top has i elements. Evidently, each of the sets is an antichain. And the number of antichains that you will get this way is the height. You can find a maximum chain by using backtracking. Let's actually do one of those by example together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly make a post set. This probably won't be the best example. When I make these up for the text and for quizzes and things, I actually spend some time with this to make sure that it, it is a good example. Okay. All right, now we're going to color this to carry out the algorithm. So I'm going to use color one, and I'm going to color the minimal elements. Is that a minimal element? Yes. Is that a minimal element? What about that one? What about that one? What about that one? Okay, now. Look at my picture. Have I left anything out? All right. Remove those elements and look at the minimal elements of what's left. Let's color them with color two. Would this get color two? Yes, no? Yes. What about this one? What about this one? Okay. Anything else that would get color too? What about this one? Yes, no? I have no idea. <laughs> I have. Fingers working at one speed and with one motor and brain at a different speed. Or maybe with no motor. So, no. Okay. Ones and twos. Now, now we're up to three. Uh, do, do we have any more twos? Where? Uh, 
I, I think that's a two right there. What about that one? No. Okay. Everybody look at it and, and, and we'll we'll move on when when everyone is satisfied that uh, I've got it right. And hopefully I don't have any extraneous threes yet. Okay. Okay, we're we're, we're happy? All right, now let's take the minimal level the minimal elements when both the ones and the twos are gone. Where what gets three? I think that gets a three. What else gets a three? How about that one? Yes? What about that one? What about that one? What about that one? What about that one? Yes? Anything else? Anything else? We're happy? Okay. Now we'll go to fours. Minimal elements of what's left when the ones, twos, and threes are left, are removed. Where are the fours? What about that one? That's a four. That one? What about that one? No. How about that one? What about that one? Okay. Four. Any more fours? Remove all the fours and take the minimal elements of what's left. There's only one element left. Okay, and that gets a five. This process halts when you have colored everything. Okay, now, all you computer science types, this should be just, just very, very natural. This is what you learned in kindergarten. Because you certainly learned backtracking in kindergarten, didn't you? So what's the highest number that we used? Five. Find any five. There's only one. Why does that number have a five and not a four? Because it wasn't minimal when I made the fours. So it has to be over a four. Find a four that it's over. There's only one. Why does that four have a four and not a three? Because it's over a three. Find one. There's only one. Why does that element have a three and not a two? Because it's over a two. Find one. Now there are two. Uh, no, there's only one. There's only there's only one. It's only one two. Why does that two have a two and not a one? Because it's over a one. Choose one. Now, for the first time, there's multiple choices. But in a big example, I hope you you can see that as you're doing the backtracking, there might be many choices along the way. But when I make that choice, what have I done? One, two, three, four, five. I have found a chain of size five, and I found a partition into five antechains at the same time. That's how you do this problem. That's, you can teach a third grader to do that. You can teach a computer to do that. You can teach a Georgia student. That's really easy. Is that algorithm clear? There, on the test archive, there must be 30 examples of this. It's on every test in this material I've ever given, and it will be on your 
next test, which is October 22. You will be given a post set of some modest size. It might be a little even bigger than this. And you will be asked to find the height by producing a partition into H antichains and a chain of size H. And I expect you to use this algorithm right here. And it'll take you like three minutes. Is that clear? Very concrete. Very, very concrete. It's a one-line proof. All right, let's go back to the... All right, that's dual Dilworth question. Finding the best partition, or what, just... What do you mean by best? You mean smaller number? Because you're, you're producing a partition into H antichains. Could you possibly do it in fewer than H? No. Why? You got a chain of size H. Can't partition it into fewer than H antichains when you have a chain of size H. Pigeonhole. Pigeonhole. If you did it in H minus 2, put H pigeons, the elements of the chain, into the H minus 2 holes. You have to put two pigeons in the same hole. The two pigeons are comparable now. You put them into the same antichain, they have to be incomparable. Can't do it. So a partition into H antichains together with a chain of size H completely answers the problem, what is the height, and what is the minimum size partition in the antichains? Are there other partitions in the antichains? Sure. For example, you could do it upside downwards. You could take off the maxima elements, then take off the maxima elements of what's left, etc. Okay, and you can mix and match. You can Take one like this and take one like that. You could. There, there are other partitions. But this is a method that's surefire, easily programmed. Even on a data, I mean, it's not, this is not graphic. This, you can do this on a data file. Real, runs real fast. 